Hi, this is Elliot from EO Nutrition. This video is going to be the first in a two-part series where first of all, we'll look at testing thiamine status and then secondly, we're going to look at the best form of thiamine to take and I'm gonna tell you about the form that I think is superior and, and why that actually is. But first of all, in today's video, we'll look specifically at how you can measure thiamine status through specific tests what you can do in terms of getting blood tests, looking at urinary organic acids tests, looking at amino acids, looking at the direct markers of thiamine status, and then also the indirect or functional markers. So hopefully by the end of the video, you should have a rough idea of what markers might be out if someone is low in thiamine and how you can assess that. So first of all, let's look at some of the problems with ordinary measurements or ordinary testing of thiamine. So your physician or your GP will likely test plasma thiamine. Unfortunately, this is not a good reflection of total body status. It's actually only reflective of recent intake. So someone can be quite deficient and still come up with a normal plasma thiamine. It's usually the last thing to go. And so if someone does come up as low plasma thiamine, it can really indicate a low um, total body status if it's that severe. However, it can also reflect low recent intake. Instead, what we wanna be looking at are several other markers which can give us either a direct or an indirect measurement of thiamine status. So we have many different indirect measurements and some of these are looking at how the body is using thiamine and if it can't use thiamine very well, then the consequences of that produces elevations in other markers, which can give us kind of like an indirect uh, idea of what's going on. So for instance, there are elevations in lacta lactate or pyruvate, which can be found in the blood or the urine. Likewise, the amino acid alanine, if this is elevated, this can also be an indirect marker. On a urinary organic acids test, you might see elevated branch chain keto acid metabolites. We'll go through what those are. And you may also see elevations in alpha ketoglutarate. In whole blood, the most well-known uh, marker for thiamine is erythrocyte transketolase activity, and that would reduce in thiamine deficiency. There's also whole blood thiamine pyrophosphate, which is a relatively new test, but which the um, the research seems to indicate is a good marker for thiamine status. And there's also another thing or another marker which I tend to see in people that's unexplained and it does improve sometimes when someone takes thiamine and that is low um, serum potassium. In the blood, we can look at erythrocytes or red blood cells and in those cells, they contain an enzyme called transketolase. Now, if you think back to my previous videos, transketolase is an enzyme which requires thiamine to function. And so when that enzyme, when the activity of that enzyme is reduced, it's a very sensitive and specific marker for thiamine deficiency. If someone has high thiamine or they have good thiamine, the transketolase activity is good, it's within range. On the other hand, if we don't have enough, then transketolase activity goes down. And that's one of the ways that we can get an indication as to how well the body can use thiamine. So this is a functional indirect marker. Now, there is a potential problem with this because Dr. Derek Lonsdale, what he found was that erythrocyte transketolase is good, but it's not always, in, it doesn't always tell you what you need to know. Sometimes the activity of this enzyme would come back normal but actually the person was still thiamine deficient and still responded to supplementation. In his practice, what they used was another test in conjunction with this test, and it was called the thiamine pyrophosphate effect. And unfortunately, there's no lab that offers it at the moment. So the transketolase activity can potentially be the best thing that we've got in terms of our tools. Now, in terms of where you would find this, you would find this in the United States at HDRI Labs or in the UK with a lab called BioLab. The next is another blood measurement, and this is looking at active thiamine pyrophosphate in the whole blood, okay? So 
again, when we when we absorb thiamine through the gut, we get it into cells, we activate it. And so this is a relatively new marker, but the research indicates that this is quite a good marker for whole, uh, for total body status. Now, this is likely to reflect long-term status and is not necessarily going to be affected that much by recent dietary intake. Now, this test is available at LabCorp. I don't personally run it that often, and I have found that some people who come back with normal uh, levels, they still benefit from thiamine supplementation. The next two markers are what we would find on a urinary organic acids test, or alternatively, they can be in the blood as well. So, as per the diagram, you see that when we are metabolizing glucose, we're breaking it down. We break it down into its constituent molecules of pyruvate, and pyruvate is then run through an enzyme called pyruvate dehydrogenase to form or to yield acetyl coenzyme A. Now, to do this, pyruvate dehydrogenase needs several different uh, cofactors, but one of those is thiamine. And so when we have low thiamine, the activity of that enzyme slows down. What we can end up with is a bit of a backlog of pyruvate. So if someone has high levels of pyruvate, it can mean that they're not able to shunt it through the next phase of that pathway because the enzyme has slowed down. So therefore, high pyruvate or elevated levels of pyruvate, either in the blood or in the urine, might indicate that actually someone is low in thiamine. Likewise, what we see with pyruvate is that pyruvate, when it cannot travel down that pathway through that enzyme, then it's shunted towards the synthesis of lactic acid or lactate. And so therefore, what is a known consequence of thiamine deficiency, particularly severe thiamine deficiency, is lactic acidosis. And so what can happen is, is that as pyruvate is shunted towards lactate, we may end up with a elevation of lactic acid coming out through the urine, or alternatively, that can also be picked up in the blood. So just to be clear, someone may have an elevation in lactate, they may have an elevation in pyruvate, but they may have an elevation in both of those markers. This test is generally found on the Genova, many tests by Genova Diagnostics. So the ion panel, the Nutraval, the organics and metabolic analysis, they all feature a similar kind of uh, organic acids test. Otherwise, it's also found on the Great Plains organic acids test. Next, we have an amino acid, and this amino acid is called alanine. And so if you recall back to the pathway that we were just talking about with glucose down to pyruvate, pyruvate shunted towards lactate, well, pyruvate can also be shunted through an enzyme called alanine aminotransferase to produce alanine. So this takes pyruvate, converts it into alanine, an amino acid, and this is one of the other things that can become elevated. When we cannot do much with pyruvate, it ends up spilling down into those other pathways. Therefore, alanine is another potential indirect marker for a thiamine deficiency. This might be found on a urinary amino acid, so someone can be wasting alanine through the urine, or alternatively, on a plasma amino acid, someone may have very high levels. Next, we are looking at the branch chain amino acid intermediates. So the branch chain amino acids, these are amino acids found in dietary protein. These are gotten from the diet. We break down protein, we absorb the amino acids. So the three branch chain amino acids are valine, leucine, and isoleucine. And so we have to process these through several different enzymes to be able to make use of them. And so one of those enzymes, branch chain amino acid transaminase, we break down these, these amino acids into their respective intermediates. So these are alpha-ketoisovalerate, alpha-ketoisocaproate, and alpha-keto-beta-methylvalerate, okay? Very long words, but basically what you need to know is that these intermediate um, molecules are just at one step in the breakdown of these amino acids to make use of them. Now, as you can see, when we have these intermediates, the next phase uses an enzyme called branch chain keto acid dehydrogenase, and that specifically uses thiamine as a cofactor. 
So a similar concept applies. So you can see if the enzyme is blocked because of a thi or the, if the enzyme slows down because of a thiamine deficiency, we end up with elevations of those intermediates. And this is what you might see. This is a very, very, very mild elevation. But generally, this is also included on a urinary organic acids test. These markers are not included on the Great Plains, but they can be found on any test by Genova Diagnostics. There is another marker which is also reflective of what's going on in this pathway, and this is called 2-hydroxy isovaleric acid. This is a marker found on the end section of the Great Plains Laboratory Organic Acids Test. Now this is an individual who I was consulting with, and as you can see, they have extremely high levels of this organic acid. They also had elevations in other um, markers, which would also indicate a quite, quite a severe thiamine deficiency. Next up, we have a Krebs cycle intermediate referred to as alpha ketoglutarate. Now, alpha ketoglutarate is simply one of the intermediates involved in the Krebs cycle or the TCA or citric acid cycle. And this is one of the enzymes which also requires thiamine as a cofactor. Alpha ketoglutarate is converted through an enzyme in purple called alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase. This converts it into succinyl CoA. And the problem is here is that thiamine is one of the cofactors. Now, if we are low in thiamine, then likewise, this can cause a buildup of alpha ketoglutarate and therefore, this spills out into the urine. Now, this can be seen on any kind of organic acids test. On the Great Plains organic, organic acids, it will be shown as 2-oxoglutaric acid instead of alpha ketoglutarate. It's the same thing. It's important to note here that this enzyme complex also requires other nutrients. So this is not entirely specific for thiamine deficiency. In fact, most of the other markers are also not specific for thiamine, simply because there are several different problems that can occur which can cause an elevation or buildup of these markers. So something that I do see quite frequently is unexplained hy hypokalemia, which doesn't respond long-term to potassium supplementation, as in it's not addressed uh, in and of itself by potassium supplementation. Potassium simply masks the symptom of the hypokalemia but actually, what I have seen is that someone replenishing thiamine can actually improve long-term potassium status without having to rely on a potassium supplement. I'm not entirely sure why this is. I think it has to do with maintaining iron gradients. There's also the possibility that the hormonal or neural um, consequences of a thiamine deficit can affect how well the kidney is retaining or wasting certain minerals. Um, I'm not sure, but this is something that I do see and I would like to understand it some more. So overall, back to the overview, we have elevations in lactate or pyruvate, elevations in alanine, the amino acid alanine, low erythrocyte transketolase activity, low whole blood thiamine pyrophosphate, high branch chain keto acid metabolites, and high alpha ketoglutarate. You, someone may also have low potassium for no known reason. So one thing that I'd like to add here is that symptoms are generally a better indication than testing. Testing can be unreliable, right? Testing is simply a snapshot in time. It doesn't necessarily give us an indication as to what happens 24 seven over long periods of time. And so someone might test one day and have one result and then test another day and have a very different result. It's also important to know that different enzymes are, are affected in different ways. So the research is clear that transketolase is going to be one of the first enzymes to go, whereas alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase is potentially going to be one of the last enzymes to go in a thiamine deficiency. And so it's not always useful to simply look at those markers. Likewise, different tissues have different requirements and there are some people who respond really positively, yet based on their organic acids or some other tests that we do, there's no real kind of indication that they do have low levels. 
So if you like this video or you found it helpful, please like and subscribe to my page. I will be making more like this in the future. The next video I'll be looking at all of the different types of thiamine. We'll be weighing out the benefits of which one um, can do what and which one kind of has its drawbacks and things. And then we will be looking at kind of the specific form that I recommend, why I recommend it and where to get that. So as I said, if you like this video, share it. Like me on Facebook, you can find me on e, uh, as EO Nutrition. My website is eonutrition.co.uk. And until then, I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.